There are many ancient areas which we often cover, which you, the viewer, will clearly realize is of a controversial nature, especially regarding dates, in which we claim are actively being denied and concealed by powerful and wealthy academic institutions. Many ancient relics within and the fact that these, what we claim are lost antiquities, are often dated by us merely through logical processes of deduction, are therein dated far before the officially guarded modern development of man, or the path thereof. My work is actively denied, and regardless of the mountain, and still mounting volumes of evidence we present, still denied as having ever existed. Funding refused en masse in regards to any consideration whatsoever possible officially. Thus any claim in any form of a highly advanced civilization except our own ever occurring here on Earth before will always be denied. Civilizations so old, their ruins now easily dismissed by geologists the world over as natural formations. However, thanks to the fact that nature rarely builds walls and courses, or create enormous megalithic walls of equal sizes built in techniques akin to the modern house brick, yet with bricks often many hundreds, sometimes thousands of tons in weight, and all once seemingly effortlessly placed atop one another. And thanks to these clear factual elements, which can allow us to identify the artificial nature of many formations claimed as geological. This evidence thankfully still being visible upon these so-called geological formations. Features which enable all with critical capacities to distinguish that of a ruin academically suppressed by being systematically dismissed as geological. Kaimanawa Wall, near Lake Taupo, New Zealand, is but one example of this massive dismissal of ancient antiquity, reluctantly explored by mainstream academia in the late 90s. However, an individual by the name of Barry Brailsfords also published an article in the New Zealand Listener, which stated, as we do, that the wall is not geological, and for a brief moment created a public exposure of mainstream archaeology and historical institutions' active refusal of the obvious in favor of the already concluded. Barry Brailsford's valiant journalism considers the possibility of a lost civilization, like one mentioned earlier and although, in his opinion, is located within permitted history, and our claim is of one far older, pre-Ice Age in fact, he still, regardless, pinned its creation on the correct parties. Titled Megalith Mystery, are giant stones in the Kaimanawa Forest Park evidence of an ancient New Zealand culture? According to Brailsford's article, the stone wall is at least 2,000 years old and was created by the first settlers of New Zealand, the Waitaha. Furthermore, Brailsford also pertained to the wall being a link between New Zealand, Egypt, and South America. We feel his article is a very well-presented investigation into what is clearly an ancient ruin of artificial origin. However, we attest to the wall being a relic of a once far more advanced and much older, now lost civilization. Brailsford listed 12 pieces of evidence for its construction. For example, the fact that the visible stones in the front are a uniform 1.9 meters wide by 1.6 meters tall and 1 meter wide deep. However, politically, the view that civilizations existed in New Zealand before the Maori culture, the currently protected paradigm, is never going to be accepted. The conclusion made by the commission funded geologists, it that the formation is merely an outcrop of a large ignimbrite, a natural formation created about 330,000 years ago. They claim the uniform shapes were produced by conveniently identical fractures in the rock. The official line is that the Kaimanawa wall has been proclaimed a natural rock formation. And we know better than many that this tale of events is very unlikely to change in the future. Yet, regardless of this, we find the Kaimanawa wall highly compelling. During our own in-depth, long-term investigations into the possibility of our small planet once being home to possibly multiple developed civilizations, each met cataclysm, thus each lost civilizations, as far as mainstream academia would accept, 
civilizations far more advanced than will ever be academically shared, never even considering the possibility that one was indeed once responsible for the many inexplicably precise yet enormous ancient ruins found all over the world. We recently did an expose regarding the Bazda Caves. Located within Turkey, we covered the many ancient tool marks present within the caves. It was an ideal place for us to launch a pursuit into whether we could identify multiple lost civilizations. We pursued the identification of signature features within and amongst the many enigmatic stone-cut scars left by ancient technologies once used to create these incredible sites. In doing so, we identified a signature within the block building of one specific civilization, whose ruins dot Greece, Egypt, and far beyond, whose signature also present at this circular mound. Discovered by mainstream archaeologists a while ago, yet regardless Greece's culture ministry, warning against overboard speculation that an ancient artificial mound being excavated could contain a royal Macedonian grave or even Alexander the Great, the mainstream awareness of the site, it seems, was successfully suppressed. Regardless, due to our own independent investigations into a civilization who once constructed a number of ruins still unexplained, identifying their signature present at the site, it is unquestionably an ancient structure of a now lost and suppressed civilization. Now known as the Casta Tomb, it was, intriguingly, adorned with a pair of sphinxes whose heads are missing. Alas, we have previously addressed this mass destruction, with many other sphinx heads destroyed, in an effort to suppress Anubis as its true identity and the sphinx's true canine origins. Yet alas, the main stonework is the smoking god. The compounding factors indicating that this site was once built even quite possibly by the great pyramid builders due to the addition of sphinxes, yet it has been successfully stifled from mainstream view. These headless sphinxes, clearly of a canine nature, and as we have previously postulated in regards to the great sphinx of Giza, was in fact once depicted as the head of Anubis and the water erosion theory, a convolution in an effort to hide the fact that the great sphinx once rested within a great lake, namely Anubis Lake. Yet I digress. The circular structure within Greece may have indeed once been built by this same once inexplicably advanced ancient civilization. Yet alas, any academic study funded by mainstream institutions will never accept or even consider the possibility of any advanced civilization regardless of the precision evident in their stonework, once anywhere as close or even more advanced than us today ever having existed. This advanced yet most likely claimed as Greek ruin may have indeed been used by said characters, as their tombs as claimed. Unfortunately, however, said tomb is also often claimed as their handiwork as well, regardless of the inexplicable features present upon all these sites. Whether claimed as Greek or Roman, the size and indeed precision of some of the blocks often present are far out of their capabilities, yet these mainstream conspiracy theories remain the status quo, regardless of said evidence. It is a system of denial and process. And we think, for good reason, although argued as the burial site of Alexander the Great, the signature features never lie, allowing us, no matter how controversial, to date this relic to a forgotten time within history. It is a debate and a site which we find highly compelling. An official of Loristan's cultural heritage, academics of the handicrafts and tourism organizations, announced the discovery of an ancient yet highly elaborate ancient clay water transfer system, akin to an ancient aqueduct found in incredible condition during excavations in Borogir, according to a report by Mir News Agency. Irrigation systems are yet another area of still existing features which can be found to be indicative of an ancient yet highly advanced constructor. These irrigation systems, according to academic fallacy, were created by civilizations with far inferior knowledge of sewage and irrigation than modern man. 
Thus, the construction of any systems should of its matching with mainstream timelines have been of a primitive nature, with their knowledge of building said systems in its infancy, and any claimed culprit within permitted history was also far less equipped than us today. Yet alas, regardless of these obvious factors, thus, supposedly, on their first attempts, got them perfectly right the first time round. They did such a good job, in fact, that many systems within Peru in particular are still in use to this day. These supposed soft metal wielding ancestors within our own post Ice Age permitted history being claimed as the original installers of these perfect systems. We perceive such attempted postulations as an insult to those with intelligence. Furthermore, our investigation within Pompeii, for example, although we have also often covered advanced knowledge within metallurgy in the pipeworks, having tin pipes for drinking water, yet lead for sewage, such awareness, such accomplishments, Pompeii is truly an astonishing ancient site. We also covered the sewage and irrigation systems built to withstand an enormously larger population than would ever be accepted as having once before us been possible. Yet the fact that these systems were built to withstand and are still used within even today's heavily populated towns is an undeniable reality. In regards to the rather beautiful system, unearthed in Iran, however, has predictably thrown a few surprising and for some individuals tasked with upholding current paradigms rather uncomfortable controversial features surrounding its construction and the precision of its past function. The official Hojat Yar Mohammadi, tasked with investigating the elaborate and simply exquisite surviving example of the abilities of the ancients in regards to water manipulation, the official said that the ancient aqueduct includes a quote, smart water distribution system and was part of a historic castle. This quote, smart water distribution system is only mentioned by this funded academic due to the public exposure the site has successfully experienced, and anyone with experience in such fields could indeed identify these truths themselves. However, no so-called official or any funded individual or institute for that matter will ever accept a drastic alteration in man's chronology. The clay pipes, known as Tampushe in Farsi, once transferred water for an ancient castle's garden. According to the official, clearly impressed with the advanced nature of the find, the big clay irrigational pottery distributed the water and removed the mud as it functioned, an incredible feat for the time the system is claimed to have been constructed within. The system minimized the risk of blockage in the flow of water. Yet what stood out about this old system to him the most was its optimal use of water resources. Who built this incredible clay watering system? When did they build it? How did they have such advanced knowledge and abilities in regards to water manipulation? A simple garden watering system from a few centuries ago? Or a once submerged, unearthed, loved and maintained artifact, once again submerged, yet thus, when we have unearthed it yet again, found to be a marvelously preserved artifact, surviving into our age, possibly originating from a lost civilization? We found Burojard's aqueduct and the subsequent discoveries of its incredibly advanced features highly compelling. Countless, talented, valiant souls spanning all throughout modern history have been publicly lambasted for their troubles. Not only are such readings and results regularly scoffed at, and any subsequent finding, all stemming from their honest admittance that their data showed evidence of inhabitation with quote, underestimated prehistoric dates. Many of these artifacts and ruins, claimed as being a mere few centuries old, we have, due to extensive research into similarities and differentiations at many of these sites, managed to locate signature stonework within the structure's outer walls, clearly submerged and perfectly preserved for untold millennia. Indicative of many inexplicable sites around the world, which some even claim are upwards of 300 million years old. The Great Pyramids, along with their Great Sphinx, we feel, with the substantial evidence we have previously put forward, 
is a treasure trove of examples, for when one becomes aware of Giza's anomalies at least, can expose those fed a lie, the impossibilities within said conspiracy theory, and begin to realize more and more unexplainable anomalies, helping others to realize just how impossibly difficult these structures would have been to create. A feat when considered by many, especially those with a good idea for the sheer size of this place, find the reality that the plateau was possibly man-made very hard to conceive. Subsequently, still concealing many secrets, which we feel, is the purpose of the plateau being created in the first place. And although it seemingly spans far from the feet of the gigantic pyramidic trio and their accompanying sphinx, we feel this was deliberate and not naturally formed. According to computer engines, the stresses within the Great Pyramid itself were perfectly calculated. However, the main strut or lintel in the Grand Gallery is cracked indicating pulley systems or other heavy technology was still atop the structure once built. This extra weight has been hypothesized was an oversight. Furthermore, any attempts to reconstruct these incredible buildings by using computer systems to simulate supposed slave attempts, we still, to this day, cannot find a valid working technique. However, if one ups the size of the being, their strength, and indeed their intellect, not only were the pyramids within reach, but also many other baffling megalithic areas, such as polygonal masonry, all could be explained. Additionally, along with this hypothesis, many giant-sized sarcophagi have been found throughout Giza. Yet we feel, covered up, dismissed as clearly what they are tombs, in favor of explaining them away as storage cases. Who built ancient Egypt? When did they build it? How did they build it? Questions which need to be answered. Questions which we find highly compelling. We are often confronted with peculiar, seemingly impossible artifacts that will, after some in-depth investigation, leave one with more questions than answers. This either due to their enormous, often seemingly impossible sizes, megaliths in some locations weighing far over 1,000 tons. Somehow, once used in their construction, sometimes set aloft, proof that not only were these stones hewn but moved and lifted seemingly with ease. But also, alas, the lack of public exposure many said sites are granted, often minimal at best, Thus, countless examples of advanced ancient technology remain still hidden here upon our planet. As a consequence, many have avoided scrutiny. Details therein which are clearly of a controversial nature are conveniently absent any funded studies of said ruins. We feel ruins of great importance, but due to the strength of evidence one can surmount in support of past, once highly advanced ancient civilizations at said locations, they are largely overlooked and actively avoided by funded archaeologists, academics, and historians alike en masse. Simply ignored, thus preventing all from what we feel is a birthright, an accurate, warts and all, transparent exploration of the origins of humanity and, in turn, the history of our planet. Allowing one and all to make up their own minds in regard to the origin of said sites, no matter how controversial. This is the exact reason for the channel's creation, and is the driving force behind the six books one intends to write, a revolutionary cataloging of once, yet no more, deliberately overlooked or academically dismissed sites dotted all over the world. For when one explores our content, they will be made aware of a smorgasbord of unique and often inexplicable features which can be found all over Earth. In addition, it is not just the visible feats of ancient stoneworking that are the singular astonishing legacy left by a now lost, once highly advanced ancient civilization. For there are many other feats accomplished in a bygone era. Prehistoric mine shafts can still be found in many areas of Earth. Not only are there still existing, seemingly machine-cut, extremely ancient, incredibly deep mine shafts in a number of areas of Earth, 
including those featured found within Tel Aviv, are all but one among many relics, all clearly left by a capable group hidden from the world. But ancient cities exist also, ones covered previously, which were all once somehow cut from Earth's bedrock, that due to their location have fortunately been explored by a number of individuals over the years, never funded, but merely driven by curiosity. Thus, the true astonishing depth, and indeed the incredible achievement these once were, has all been previously documented. Civilizations that were once capable of not just digging these mines to incredible depths, but were in fact capable of creating entire temples from one gigantic solid stone, cut with such incredible artistic ability and accuracy, they are staggering examples of ancient engineering. In China and Japan, gigantic megaliths left, mysteriously abandoned, Easter Island, the unfinished obelisk Aswa, Egypt, Yangshan Quarry within China, all abandoned, with Yangshan possessing an almost detached megalith, clearly cut using incredible stone-cutting tools, a block estimated as weighing 16,000 tons when liberated from the bedrock. All these anomalies are but a few examples which support the premise of lost technology, knowledge, and an advanced civilization. It seems that the advanced mines, like those found in Tel Aviv, are but a tip of an archaeological iceberg in regards to the mystifying stone cutting of a now lost antiquity. Why did humans placed within a lost chapter of antiquity exert such backbreaking effort in the attempt of extracting these precious metals? Who dug the Tel Aviv mines? Was it the same group who built ancient Peru? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Modern-day Turkey – a literal treasure trove of surviving relics of a lost antiquity. Temples from a bygone era, seemingly prehistoric stone-cut monolithic academically supposed tombs, countless ancient ruins, not only built from incredibly large megalithic stones, but many said stones etched with a signature, which we have found at a number of sites now, dotting the entire globe. This all aligns with our own researchers' conclusions, suggesting they were, in fact, left by a now lost civilization, due to their concentrations focused around nearby anomalies and unexplainable features often found amongst the structures. That these unique blocks are found so often incorporated into sites impossible to explain, yet spanning most of the Earth. Yet regardless, Turkey is an excellent place for anyone to heavily research, in pursuit of fragments of evidence, overwhelmingly, undeniably, supporting our long-held postulation of lost yet once highly capable civilizations who once called these sites home. Although some stonework in the area can be acclaimed as cyclopic, Hattusa also possesses something more extraordinary – a mysterious green cube still in situ to this day. Its continued existence and seeming resistance to grave robbing and stone robbers, perhaps due to the many stories attached to the stone, all of which claim it possesses powerful energies, one of the reasons why it has fortunately remained where it was placed untold millennia ago. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguingly, is the possibility for our claim here on the channel that just like that of many other ruins all over Earth, not claimed by our most recent ancestors themselves, but due to this convenience subsequently attributed to said group by modern archaeology as their work also, successfully concealing the site's true remarkable origins, especially our mysterious green stone. Rich agricultural lands once surrounded the ancient settlement, which we claim was itself built atop the remains of a now lost civilization, and their possible choice of location may have been driven by the stone itself, thus having predated said group's arrival, which according to modern archaeology and permitted timelines, dates from an inhabitation during the Bronze Age. Yet the purpose for the green stone, its past possible significance, and the seemingly still surviving wariness and reluctance of any immoral activities surrounding the stones continued life at the center, or proverbial center, 
or indeed foundation of this incredible site, left alone, still resting in its location, its mysterious supposed powers, documented since and many before its long-recorded history within modern academic journals. Could the claims regarding the green stone be true? Even attributed with miraculous healing capabilities? The inhabitants had an excellent supply of timber for building, fertile lands providing possibly millions of now lost ancestors who grew crops of wheat in massive quantities. They had a rich diet too, with barley, lentils, and many other remnants of fruit and vegetables that were successfully being harvested. Flax has also been found to have once been harvested. However, their primary source of cloth was sheep wool. They also hunted deer responsibly within their forests, but akin to Old England, may have been a luxury reserved for the land-owning nobility alone. It seems that the people who initially created the site successfully built a functioning, architecturally, irrigationally, and horticulturally advanced settlement far out of the reach of our bronze-wielding ancestors, who, we feel, simply reignited into a functioning township. Yet it seems the other settlements have all but turned to dust. Were they simply neglected by our Bronze Age ancestors, perhaps? If so, supportive of our posit of the site's efficient layout, was not the work of the Bronze Age people exhibiting a layout and managing of land far beyond their capabilities. And these neighboring sites, possibly too dilapidated to try to repair, were simply left to slowly return to nature. Yet, the green stone, we feel, due to its location, along with the many past popular native accounts of strange goings-on surrounding its claimed energy, the possibility that the stone was once held in incredibly high regard is a possible history for the green stone which we find highly compelling. Many of the sites we often select to cover can oftentimes be barely surviving relics from lost antiquities. However, we find ourselves in a fortunate age, where not only do we have the technology to study vast volumes of literature, all at the tap of a finger, but also enables those with similar interests, and possibly knowledge of a ruin unheard somewhere, to discuss such. And so far, it seems the ongoing debate has found a healthy home here on YouTube. Indeed, with a number of dot-com websites becoming more and more popular, this being an inevitable result of the exposure of the many relics we share, proving a vast amount of people share a similar opinion, and like you and I, are seemingly not blind to the obvious, rather than blindly following the opinion fed to them by authority. However, the fact that the many as-mentioned ruins, no matter how robust, made from any known material, will all eventually return to nature, either through erosion or entropy, it is inevitable. We are in an age where not only do we possess such capabilities, but there are fortunately countless ruins once made of enormous, notoriously weather-resistant tough granite. Baffling and unexplainable stones, we simply cannot decode how they were used. And we feel this is perhaps the exact reason they were used in said ruins. Perhaps it was a statement to say, we were here, and we were advanced. The polygonal roadway on Cypress Hill, for example, the main subject of this video, is one such example of a ruin that, due to its apparent construction in courses, is clearly a close match to that of polygonal masonry, now catalogued all over the world. The opportunity to dismiss as geological, we feel, is becoming a stronger argument by the day. Cypress Hill's polygonal roadway reveals there are many incredible areas which are not as robust as others, far more susceptible to erosion. However, in the channel's opinion, archaeological excavation should be undertaken. It will prove or disprove the discovery of the formation's true origins, either artificial or an uncanny natural formation. Mystery history strongly suspects it is indeed an exposed section of a much larger still buried road which has laid preserved under the soil just waiting to be exposed. 
Who built the roadway on Cypress Hills? Do you feel confident in declaring it of artificial origins? Or do you perceive it as a geological formation? Feel free to let us know your opinion in the comments. I think adding personal opinions below will be an interesting exercise for all to see in regard to public opinion of the formation. Hopefully, one day localized digs will expose the reality once and for all regarding the road. Undoubtedly, a most curious uncanny of rock formations, one which we find highly compelling. The Neolithic Era a mysterious, largely unknown, yet often aggressively debated age, which, regardless of our planet's long history, is a group who could seemingly build stone trilithons weighing many hundreds, even in some places megaliths, thousands of tons in weight. Largely claimed as our ancestral beginnings, with the only ever modern civilization that being our own, a seemingly immovable, non-negotiable reality long attested and aggressively defended timeline, defended, funded, and supported by nearly every institutional and academic field of study the world over. The complexity, the precise alignments, the illogical efficiency, and the enormity of many stones, all often used in the creation of the dolmens, is all evidence of a far more capable group than currently claimed, specifically that of a site known as Gavernus a site we have covered in the past, recognized as one of the largest Neolithic sites anywhere on Earth. Undeniable proof, we feel, among many others, which fit the same description. A group with far more advanced, oftentimes far more ingenious weightlifting abilities than will ever be given mainstream credit for. Accomplishing feats of ancient engineering, whoever accomplished by, no matter how primitive in appearance, were built from gigantic, often stones, roofs, and walls cut from notoriously hard stones, allowing them their incredible longevity. Surviving long-lived architecture is thus still on display in many places worldwide. Lintels still set aloft many gateways, each of giant proportions, yet the most incredible of these relics, we feel, is undoubtedly the largest of them all, the Dolmen of Menga. Successfully stifled from more mainstream acclaim, this undoubtedly due to the dolmen's incredibly large roof, with a capstone estimated to weigh far over 1,000 tons. Regardless of this reality, they are still continued to be argued as the creation of the first real permanently documented settlement of man, from a previously long-lived, torturous lifestyle of the nomads. And although they were oftentimes depicted as cavemen, the reality is far from the bone-wielding ape-like depictions currently pushed by mainstream academically funded institutions. With academia kept busy continuing to argue in support of this mainstream opinion, argued as reality no matter how illogical, these supposed Stone Age people also displayed an astonishing insight into astronomical precisions with alignments we are only beginning to decipher. Additionally, and in conclusion, any group or individual in a position of trust who continues to claim that these Neolithic groups were not global is in support of a fallacy, and an ignorant one at that, for overwhelming evidence suggests everywhere flying in the face of this clear lie. The likeness of Neolithic sites, the sharing of patterning and artistic designs make the connections undeniable. Fortunately for truth-seekers, it is immortal and will always be there to find. As such, it is only reality that will stand up to the tests of time, to resist against all scrutiny. For as one may already know, the facts don't lie. And the more we decipher regarding said sites, the more we learn about ourselves and each other. Who were the Neolithics? How did they accomplish such incredible feats of ancient engineering? We find their existence and past capabilities highly compelling. There are a number of ruins on Earth which are either located atop nearly impossible mountaintops or on the ledges of desert hilltops, making sanctuaries from masterfully cut stone temples, and Masada is of no exception. 
the first official funded excavations in the area took place from 1963 to 1965 and was under former IDF Chief of Staff and archaeologist Yigal Yadin. The dry desert climate allowed the preservation of classy frescoes and organic remains belonging to the rebels who once called the sanctuary temples home. However, it has long been claimed that the archaeological team were not given full access to the site and have repeatedly noted that they are aware of the site's secret underground layers, yet were not able to fully explore it during the 60s. However, recent changes to attitudes toward historic sites has secured funding for a full exploration of these as yet unexplored underground tunnels. For the first time since 2006, a Tel Aviv University team, headed by Roman period archaeologist Guy Stiebel, have launched new excavations at the UNESCO World Heritage Site, examining previously unexplored areas of the legendary fortress. Quote, this is the next generation, Stiebel told the Times, adding that his team planned to excavate new sections of the dwellings as well as a garden constructed by Herod. He further noted, quote, Our intention is to further explore a mysterious underground structure that was detected in the earliest aerial photographs of the site in the 1920s. Yet, alas, the building's underground layers have remained unexplored. Dr. Stiebel, intriguingly, although seemingly aware of the void's existence, was reluctant to label its past uses, stated that it was possibly used as a hideout or escape route during the Siege of Masada, although he made it clear that he is unsure at the moment of the original purpose of the underground systems. Dr. Stiebel exclaimed his excitement to return to the site after an 11-year absence in statements to the media, quote, a lifetime would not suffice to get a glimpse of all the hidden beauties of Masada. Its magic is not just in the equipment, it is also in small things." End quote. Even though several experts believe that more than 95% of Masada's total size has already been explored, Stiebel believes that its core is yet to be discovered. We will, of course, keep you posted on any controversial or intriguing discoveries made during the excavations. It is a place which we find highly compelling.